As we continue our discussion on chemistry in terms of biology, we're going to now be looking at molecules. Molecules are an important term to understand and an important concept to understand because it's often confused with atoms and when you have different words thrown at you like compound, molecules, atoms, elements, things get lost. So molecules, we can define this as simply two or more atoms and an important concept is that they're in a fixed ratio meaning that they're always found in some sort of ratio. Let's look at an example, like I'm gonna write this on the side, H2O. What's the ratio here? How many hydrogens do you see here? Two. And how many oxygens do you see here? Two to one. Boom, fixed ratio, two or more atoms. This classifies as a molecule. Moving forward, there's also a chemical formula usually involved in terms of molecules. Chemical formulas are important to understand because this tells you what atoms are involved. And it also tells you how many, just like we just covered. So a good example for this would be what? What do you think? H2O. H2O, this tells me, this chemical formula tells me there are two hydrogen atoms, one oxygen atom, and it tells me exactly which ones were which because of the chemical formula. Next, we have to talk about molecular mass. So since we're talking about molecules, look what we're talking about. Molecular mass. Molecule mass. Molecular mass is just the sum of all atomic masses. This means that if we look at H2O, we have to look at each atom, because remember there are two or more atoms in a fixed ratio. We have to look at the atoms, and we have to look at how many, and figure out how much this let's say, quote-unquote, weighs, how heavy it is. So what we can say is hydrogen, how many of these do we see? We see two. So we have to multiply two by its atomic weight. The atomic weight, we'll say, is one. That's what it is. It's one Dalton in this situation. Don't worry about the units right now. This equals two. And O, which is oxygen, how many of these do we see? We see one. And what is its atomic weight? Its atomic weight, if you look at a periodic table, is about 16. So now we have 16. We combine both of those, we get 18 Daltons. That's our unit. Um, some people also say AMU, atomic mass units. So that is our molecular mass. And then lastly, we can look at chemical equations. Because we have formulas, now we can look even more so deeply at chemical equations with molecules. Chemical equations are amazing because they allow you to see reactants turn into, what do you think? Reactants are going to turn into products. The classic chemical equation of reactants into products. And one thing students often forget is this arrow is not just there to show you that reactants are turning into products. No, no, no. This is actually there because this arrow means yields. What you'll notice is in my lectures, I actually like to use this idea of blank turning into blank using an arrow because an arrow represents yields or a process that happens. Tons of different things are going on to give us these products. And this is the direct application of one of the properties that we talked about in our earlier videos. If you can remember, this is actually an example of an emergent property because we have to remember that the sum of the whole is greater than the sum of just the parts. So the parts themselves of this, let's say the characteristics of the molecules that are involved. So like, let's say we have some hydrogen and some oxygen. No, actually that's an atom. Let's say we have a bunch of water combining with some sodium chloride. Those are molecules. Characteristics of these molecules is actually and this means not equal to, not the same as uh, the components, the, to its component. It's not equal to the component characteristics. What do I mean by components? Components basically is talking about these guys, the products. Remember, 
the emergent property is that the whole is greater than the sum of the parts. There's a difference between just these reactants independently, these independent reactants that are in the chemical equation. They do not necessarily have the same characteristics as the eventual products because you have all of this going on. You have this chemical process going on, this chemical reaction that is causing emergence, causing, let's say, an emerging property to occur because of this idea that the characteristic of the molecules is not equal to the component's characteristics, the final characteristics of our products. So this covers what a molecule is. A molecule is two or more atoms. There's a chemical formula involved, like H2O. There's a molecular mass that you can easily solve using any chemical formula. And then chemical formulas are useful when we're looking at chemical equations, when we're going from reactants to products, which is a direct example of our emergent property that we talked about in our earlier lecture.